Have you ever seen what math is going to be like when there are no numbers? If you haven't, don't worry, because I got this for you. Right here we have let A and B be sets. First, a set is just a collection of objects. You can think about a set of the first 10 prime numbers, or the set of all the positive integers. Those are sets. Right here we are going to show that. Of course we have this equation here, and I will have to explain the notations. The little c right here stands for the complement, which means not in the set. This right here means the intersection. This right here means the union. You can think about this as the word and, and this right here as the word or. So we are going to show that the complement of A intersect B is equal to the complement of A union the complement of B. Like how do you even start? First, I'm just going to explain all the notations. Right here, we'll be using this notation, which means an element of. For example, right here I can say we have a set, that's a set of 1, 3, 5. The first three positive R numbers. And an element of this set, I can say 1 is an element, 3 is an element, or 5 is an element. I can say 5 is in this set. Cool. Now, I can say x in the set A, right? It's just like this is x and this is the set A. But if we have the complement, this means x is not, right? Just like the usual notation when you cross something, it means not. X is not in the set A. So once again, you can look at 1, 3, 5, and give me a number that's not in the set. You say 2. No, I say 17. I can say 17 is not in this set. 2 is also not in the set, of course. So far, so good. Cool. Remember, when you have the intersection, this right here, just think about this as and. And this right here means or. When you have an intersection of a set, the result is still going to be a set. A complement of a set is still going to be a set. So what we are trying to show is that one set is equal to another. Now, how do we show two sets are equal? Here's the deal. Let's say set A is equal to B. They are both sets. We will have to show a is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A. So this notation means the subset of, which is quite different than that. Be really careful. So if you look at 1, 3, 5, this is the set, and 5 is an element because 5 is right here. You cannot say 5 is a subset of 1, 3, 5. This is the incorrect notation because 5 is an element, it's not set. So this is bad. However, what you can say is the following. 5 in a set. Right? This is a set containing a number 5. This is a subset of the set 1, 3, 5. This is okay. That's not okay. This is okay. All right? Okay, so if you want to show one set is a subset of the other, what do we do though? Right here, I will have to tell you, A is a subset of B means the following. If an element is in A, then the element has to be in B. As you can see, this is a subset of that. 5 is in this set. 5 is also in this set. That's why this is a subset of that. Okay? Similarly for that. And as you can see, to show A is equal to B, we show that A is a subset of B, and also B is a subset of A. You can just think about it like this. If you have two numbers that say X and Y, you want to show that they are equal, what you can do is that you can show X is less than or equal to Y, and y is less than or equal to x. Because the only chance, the only time for this to be both true is that they are just equal. 
And I think this is pretty much all we need. And now let's see how to get started with the proof. Okay, whenever we do a proof problem, we should always write down PF first. And I remember the good old days when I was in college. That was the only thing I was able to write on many exam questions. But anyways, right here we will have to show that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side and both of them are sets. So we will have to show this is a subset of this and then this is a subset of that. We can do this direction first and I'm going to indicate that by writing this down. To show this is a subset of this, we will have to pick an element in here and we will have to show that element is also in here. So I'm going to start off by saying let x be any element in this set. So I will write down just exactly how it is. And we will just go by the definition and hopefully later on we can write x is also in this right here. So right here, we have a complement, right? So what does that mean? It means x is not in here. So I just say x is not an element of A intersect B. Now, we will have to be careful right here. X is not in A intersect B does not mean X is not in A intersect X is not in B. There are two mistakes. The first mistake is that this doesn't make sense with intersection. Intersections is used in between of two sets. So don't do that. If you want to write two separate things, you will have to use either and or or. The second thing is that when you cannot distribute it, the in between is an intersection, it turns into a or, not an and. So this is actually false. And to see it, whenever we are doing sets, it's really, really helpful if you draw some Venn diagrams. So let's have a look. Let's say this is the set A and this is the set B. Of course, they don't have to intersect, but in this case right here, if you draw them with some overlaps, you will get more information. A intersect B, we're talking about this right here. And right here we're saying X is an element not in here. So it can be anywhere on the outside, as long as it's not in this part. So now let's think about it. Remember, we have A and B right here like this. It looks like an 8, but it's not an 8. But anyways, if you are saying X is not in A and X is not in B, well, it's the outside. X is not in A and X is not in B. It's just the outside. I will actually write this down. The red part is X is not in A intersect B. If you are saying, just like what we did earlier, X is not in A and X is not in B. What this means is that X is not in A, so it's the outside here, right? But X is also not in B, so it's the outside here. So X cannot be in here, so you have to write that, just erase that. So you can see these two pictures are different. So how do you make them equal though? The idea is that you change this N to an word. So, X is not in A, so you are doing all the red part, like what we did earlier. Or, X is not in B, so this part, this time you can cover this portion. As long as X is not in B, then this portion is also legit. And as you can see, both pictures, they are just missing this middle part, so they are equivalent. So. This actually implies, and you can also write this down to make it more clear, you can say this implies X is not in the intersection of A and B. So this actually will give you X is not in A or X is not in B. B. And that's exactly what we went over earlier. So now, remember what I'm trying to end up with right here, right? Have a look. X is not in A. We can write that as X is in the complement of A. Keep the word or. 
x is not in B implies we have x is in the complement of B. Or you can make that into a union of these two sets. So you can see that x is an element of the complement of A union complement of B. And that's exactly what we get need, right? X is in here, and we also show that X is here. So this part checks. Now we just have to do the other side. So here we go. So I'm just going to have this direction. It means this is a subset of that. And to do so, I would say let X be in A complement union B complement. And then we pretty much can reverse it. Have a look. A is an element of the union of this and that implies X is in A complement or X is in B complement. Complement means not. So this means X is not in A or X is not in B. And then right here, it's really the same as you just go backwards. In fact, you could have just draw like bidirectional arrow. I think that will work okay, but I just wanted to make it like this to make it more clear to show that you know one set one side is the subset of the other. But anyways, this right here, if you draw a Venn diagram, you can see that this means X is not in A intersect B. So this means X is in the complement of A intersect B. So once again, X is in the right hand side, then we will be able to show that X is also in the left hand side. That's it.